The main type of coding solution is a software application. You're familiar with many. Word processors, web browsers, computer games, just about everything other than the device's system software controlling how it works is defined as a software application, generally a digital solution to a range of problems. Now apps are small software applications that generally run on mobile devices, usually for a very specific purpose or task. And this has revitalized software applications, which had re re resolved down to just a few big application sets from Microsoft, Adobe, etc. But Apple shook things up with the introduction of the iPhone, and most importantly, the App Store. Now, anyone could create simple software solutions, and there are mechanisms to easily distribute these through a range of App Stores. And this has exploded the number of coding solutions available. Building on the success of apps, they are now being used on smartwatches, TVs, and to distribute software to personal computers. Now, an application generally works through an interface that provides a way for the user to tell the app to do things, called inputs, and present information back, called outputs. How this occurs is through coded instructions to complete the task, and data that may be recorded from or used by the code is stored on the device or remotely, such as on the internet. Now this differs from the software that runs computers and robots. These are the operating systems and utility programs, which are a set of common programmed instructions that software applications can then use to tell screens to show images, save information to a disk drive, or get inputs from keyboards, without needing to know how to communicate directly with the keyboard, the drive, or the screen. This is all abstracted and left for the operating system to manage. Now, programming a robot or circuit board kit, such as we did with the um, code bugs, may mean that you give commands directly to the screen. Which, for, for example, when we gave commands to light up particular um, pixels on your code bug. Um, or we can have it respond when particular buttons are pressed. Operating systems abstract all of this for us. They let us give commands such as print high without having to tell the screen which pixels to light up for each dot in the H and the I. Now ICT courses in the past focused on teaching students how to use applications and understand all the ways in which a specific application can be used, such as a word processor, spreadsheet, video editor, etc. Digital technologies, however, is about teaching students to be able to solve real-world problems that generally will not be solvable by existing applications, or they would have already, have already have been solved. Your job is to help equip students with the tools they can use to solve the problems that they identify. And this will often involve the creation of new applications. And to do this, we use another type of software, the programming language. Programming languages are simply sets of programs written to write other programs, using a set of rules and grammatical syntax sufficient for the computer to understand exactly how to complete tasks. Remember the sandwich activity? Computers follow instructions exactly, but they have no way of knowing when they should follow them, or not, or at least not yet. In the resources and the examples, you will find a range of programming languages grouped roughly into the year levels they could be used and generally based on the ability to introduce various coding concepts, such as iteration, branching, repetition, modularity, and object-oriented programming. We also tend to progress from tactile to visual, and then to textual languages, gradually reducing in abstraction to the more concrete. And I've provided guided tutorial resources and online texts that students could use when engaging with these tools to solve their digital technology problems. But digital technology should not be reduced to reading and completing such worksheets. They provide a great way of learning how to use the programming language tool, the ICT, but programming languages are no more than that. It is how they are then used as tools by students to solve problems that makes them part 
of digital technologies.